It's the end of the week and you know what that means. Today is our cosy plan with me chat. I shall be answering your questions, housekeeping, personal stuff, some book talk. I've also got an Australian recipe to share with you. And last but not least, your choice of four self-care missions. Which one will you choose? So let's dive in. Diana Demerick here, ra ra ra, we made it to the end of another week. And as I said, this is our cozy plan with me chat. We are not working with the timer, not using the timer today, but you may like to use the, the time that we are chatting today to tidy up in your office, fold some laundry, do the dishes, it's your choice. Anyway, let's dive into the questions first, just get my reading glasses on. Right, here we go. First question is from... Uh, well, actually, it's just a number, DS8. Uh, the, YouTube has changed the policy. So, so now quite often your name will come up as uh, your, I don't know, your email or something. So you may want to check that. Anyway, so I don't know the, the name of the person. Diane, do you and your family ever eat leftovers? We don't tend to eat all the food. And so can we eat that for supper the next night? I love leftovers and often... I will either cook extra so I can take, make it like a double portion and then I'll freeze that for another time for me and hubby or I will make enough of it that I can kind of turn it into something else and we'll have it two days later. For example, if I've got a kind of a meat sauce that you would be using for spaghetti bolognese, I will probably cook double of that and then keep half of it and then a couple of days later, I will make that into a chili con carne by adding kidney beans, something like that. But a lot of the leftovers, if I don't have much leftovers, I eat those often for my lunch. Just pop them in a, in a Tupperware tub and I'm ready to go. I can take them on the go or I can eat them here at home. So yeah, love leftovers. Do you, do you ever, do you throw your leftovers out? I love, I love eating leftovers. Maybe your family's different. I hate, hate food waste. Right, next question. Uh, this is from Mar Mary Lynn Elliott. And she says, question, can you have a hygge home and not be a minimalist home? Okay, hygge is the, the art of making everything cosy. To, just enjoying everyday moments and, and taking time to appreciate what we have. Just a little, I call it like giving a little hug to yourself. And for me, the minimalist part of things goes kind, in, kind, uh, goes kind of hand in hand with the hygge thing because I cannot, I cannot feel relaxed in a home that is cluttered in too much stuff. Now, it depends on what you see as minimalist. Do you have this idea of it being a negative connotation? And I've pinned this together with some other things. I've stapled it together because... I made a video on Tuesday of what minimalism looks like for me. It's cozy minimalism and what it gives to me, all the positives. And I just wanted to highlight, because you gave me your affirmations for a, a cozy minimalist hygge home. And here's one from Becca Harrison. Minimalism to me is downsizing the amount of things that are not useful or that I forgot that I had. And that, that's really powerful because often when we have so much stuff, we kind of forget that we have it. And we really need to clear out those things because why are we living surrounded with all those things? Here's another one that really uh, struck a chord with me. This is, username is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Okay. My home is safe. To me, minimalism is being confident that all you need will be. It is living with trust and not a scarcity mindset. A minimalist home is clean, calm and peaceful. My home is a reflection. Here's the really great part for me. My home is a reflection of who I am, not who I wish I was. And I know I've mentioned this before about why are we kind of keeping all these things for some kind of fantasy life that we have instead of living the life right here and right now. So anyway, back, back to you, Marilyn. I, I would say, yeah, you can definitely have a, 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 a hygge home and not be minimalist. But for me, it goes hand in hand. Right, next question. Love these questions that come in. Cindy Van Den Bosch. Okay, she says, uh, I am a huge fan. Yay! Rah, 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 Cindy. Thanks for that. Ooh. 
I see almost every video you make and it inspires me a lot. My routines and my weekly cleaning are going well. Ra ra ra, go you. I have that under control, but I am unable to schedule my zone cleaning nor my daily focus. Do you have tips? Because it seems that I always run out of time for this. I can't get my plan and pay, pay play under control. Tips can be useful for me. Okay, so Cindy and for everybody else, it's difficult for me to know exactly what is happening for you. I, I do uh, private coaching. You can always book out a 45 minute session with me, but I'm, I'm guessing it'll be one of a couple of things. So first up, are you getting very, very comfortable with the parts of the Fly Lady system that are working for you? She says the daily routines and weekly cleaning are going really well. Sometimes we have a tendency to stick with what we know and feel comfortable with. And then subconsciously we're, we're putting the other things off like the, the uh, detailed zone cleaning or decluttering. And what I would suggest if that's your case is that for a couple of weeks you switch things around. So instead of going into your weekly home blessing, the weekly upkeep clean when we're doing 10 minutes on each of the tasks, we're not cleaning the whole house, we're just doing the 10 minute upkeep a 10 minute on the task for the upkeep clean. I would suggest that before you're allowed to do that, before you allow yourself to do it, you spend, you take your timer, set your trusty timer for 10 minutes and do 10 minutes of zone work. Because often it's just pushing ourselves gently to do something that we're not so comfortable with and do that first. And I think you will see that once you get into to the habit of forcing yourself to do 10 minutes first on the zone work, you'll see how easy it is and how much you can get done. And then you can move on with your weekly upkeep clean. So try, try that. Same goes for the, for the daily focus when we're working on plan and play, when we're working on anti-procrastination day. And, and if you need more help with those individual things in my Fly Lady Refresher course series, I go into all of these things in more detail. The, 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 the Friday roundup, that, that's just little snippets of help for you. Now, the other, the other scenario could be that you are not dedicating a certain day or time to do these tasks. If you're not getting something done, it's probably because you don't have a time, a date and a place. If you don't have it scheduled, if you don't have a reminder on your watch or on your phone or in your diary. Just got my new one. I'm looking forward to it. Mine goes from July, uh, June to June. I'm going to be updating mine. If you don't have it written down somewhere or you're not getting a reminder on your telephone, it's probably not going to happen. So if you're, if you're not getting your stuff done, try using time, date, place. Okay, next question. Okay, oh right, this, this question is, I get this question a lot from various subscribers. Is my friend Angela, who you see um, in my posts about the Blue Tits Chill Swimmers or videos where you see us swimming, because we're, we're, we bring along breakfast or sometimes if it's in the evening, we have a nice buffet of, of food. And the question is, is Angela Australian or is she Kiwi? Because she always brings Anzac biscuits. Now, Angela is from the UK. Let me see, she's 62 now, because she had her birthday a couple of years ago. Beautiful, beautiful Angela. And I'm going to tell you what, I, I messaged with uh, Angela yesterday. She was travelling around Australia for a month in 1999 and came across Anzac cookies while she was staying in Daintree Rainforest, which I think is in Queensland. Okay, Queensland. The lady who baked them was kind enough to let me have her recipe. So it's pure cultural <laughs> appropriation. And you can tell me all the, all the Kiwis or the Australians out there, do you use the, a similar recipe? And I have to say, Angela's Anzac biscuits are phenomenal. I, I've never tasted anybody else's, so I can't really compare, but they're, they're really good. And it's difficult to get golden syrup here in Denmark. Angela buys hers online, but if you're in Denmark, you can use the uh, dark syrup. It's called uh, Merck syrup and you'll get a similar result. 
And Angela says she has been making them regularly ever since 1999. She thinks they're delicious and they are very quick to make. So there you go. Okay, next question. This is uh, from Laurie T and she says, love all your videos. Yeah, thanks Laurie. Is it typical in your neck of the woods to not have upper cabinets? Now, if you've seen my kitchen and I've got a whole playlist where you can see my small Danish uh, minimalist kitchen and how I store things. Yeah, actually here in Denmark, I actually have quite a few friends that don't have upper cabinets. And that, in, in, in a way, sometimes I see, you know, if I see kind of YouTubers in the States with these huge cabinets that they can't even reach, they need a ladder. I think, oh, it must be nice to have all that space. But on the other hand, it really keeps me on track with limiting how much food I store, how many gadgets I have. So in a way, it actually works really well because I think that the more space that you have, the more space that you fill. And that's not always a good thing. Right, one or two more questions and then we can get on to the, oh, the book talk, self-care ideas. Right, okay. Uh, this question is from BW07. Have you ever thought about moving to a smaller space? Haha. <laughs> okay, our eldest is going to move out in October and hubby and I are already dreaming of having less stuff and less rooms to care for. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that is my... Uh, the, hubby and I, we have a plan to move. I'm not sure when it will be happening, but probably within... I don't know, the next five to 10 years of moving out of this big old house and moving to something smaller. Now we do have the uh, very small, quaint, cute cabin, our weekend cabin over in Sweden. It's an hour's drive from here. We're on the very south coast of Sweden. Slightly, slightly different climate there. It's so funny because it's only an hour from here, but we, we, here we're on the east coast and on Sweden we're on the south coast. But the plan is to move from here and about 10 years ago, I, I, I kind of imagined that we just moved to a smaller house in the same area. But now that our kids, our kids, they both have their own apartments in the center of Copenhagen, in, in different areas of Copenhagen. And now I'm seeing that actually, I think we'll probably move to an apartment in Copenhagen. I don't, do not need to have the, the garden here. I, I just find that as long as I'm able to get into the sea, that's my main thing. So that, that, that's the plan, moving into the, uh, into the city. Don't know where in the city, but we'll keep you updated. Right, final question. Okay, Jacqueline uh, Ludlow says, Hi Diane, hope you are having a lovely family Easter. I was looking at your good morning routine on the screen. If you don't mind me asking, when do you empty your dishwasher? Okay, so when do you, dear viewers, when do you empty your dishwasher? So when the kids were still at home, I would run the dishwasher every, every day at the same time uh, because we were generating a lot of um, dishes and it worked really well. I didn't have to think about it. It was just on automatic pilot. It was usually, it would be, uh, when was it? As soon as we had had breakfast in the morning, I would run the dishwasher or before we had dinner. It would usually be one of those two times. And then it would be one of the kids that emptied the dishwasher. And if you have that struggle with, oh, I don't want to empty the dishwasher, or if, if it's you, not the kids, I always say, use, use your timer. Use it actually as a stopwatch and time yourself, see how much time it actually takes. Because often we think, oh, it's going to take three centuries and, and it takes like three minutes. But since the kids moved out, it's only me and hubby here. I, I run the dishwasher when it needs run, when it's full. And if it's kind of almost full, I, I can always find a couple of things. Maybe it's a vase or uh, the lids of the recycling bins. I can easily fill it up and I run it when it needs done. Now, you may be different, maybe you uh, run it according to the electricity costs or the uh, water costs where, where you live, but just find uh, a system that works for you. And don't be afraid to change it 
as your circumstances change, maybe you move to a different area, maybe family members move in with you, Ch change it up, find something that works for you. Great questions today, let's move on. And as we've been talking about cleaning and housekeeping, the, the zone that we're working on in this week in the Fly Lady system, if you're using that along with me, is Fly Lady Zone 1, which is the entryway to the house. Maybe you come in through the garage, maybe you come up the garden path, uh, the hall, the dining room. And remember, when you're doing your detailed cleaning or decluttering, use a timer, just 10 minutes. I, I do 10 minutes at the start of the week. If I can get a few minutes here and there after that, that's great. And next week's Fly Lady Zone is zone to the kitchen. We've just been talking about the kitchen. But as always, make sure that you're getting your daily routines done first and your weekly upkeep clean because those two things, they keep everything ticking over. Some quick book talk. And I finished the Reverend Richard Cole's Murder Before Even Song. I enjoyed that one. There, there wasn't too much happening. It's a very genteel one, but I'll probably read uh, more of his books. The one by G.M. Mallier, which was recommended, I, I discovered it wasn't actually in the Reverend Max Tudor series, the one I'd managed to track down from our local library. So I actually, that, that was, I did not finish. I started listening to it, but it just seemed too kind of dark. Um, so, so I did not finish that one, but I would still look out for the Reverend Max Tudor. I'm still trying to track down those ones. But one that I am really enjoying on audiobook at the moment, let me just get the name, A Three Dog Problem by S.J. Bennett. Now, when I saw this popping up recently, I, I actually thought it was maybe young adult fiction or a chil children's book but because of the cover. And of course, I know never judge a book by its cover. Actually, it's a really uh, fun read. It's about Queen Elizabeth at the palace, Buckingham Palace, and there's a mystery there. And it's just really, uh, I've loved listening to it the last couple of days. Now, I'm listening to it on audiobook, and I've read the reviews of uh, this book, which say it's a bit long, a lot of characters, difficult to follow. Sometimes when you're listening to it, if you've got a good narrator, it really helps to uh, be able to keep track of different characters because they're putting on slightly different accents and, and ages. And I have to say the narrator in this one is absolutely brilliant. It's a, a British actress who I love, Samantha Bond. And she was actually Miss Moneypenny in many of the old Bond, boom, boom, <laughs> the old Bond films. And she's got this quite kind of plummy, upper class British voice. She's often on things like Midsummer Murders, Barnaby, Inspector Barnaby. Uh, and I love, uh, I love her voice and she does a really great narration of, of this book. So I'm really enjoying that right now. And the other one which I just finished on audiobook was the Kamogawa Food Detectives. I enjoyed that, very gentle though. There's, there's no uh, murders in it, it's, it's about finding uh, old recipes and it's about uh, Japanese culture. So that, that was interesting. And one that I'm really excited about, I haven't got it yet, I haven't got my hands on it yet, but I'm first in, in the cute little library, is a new Anthony Horowitz book. Now, I love Anthony Horowitz books. The Magpie Murders, for me, that was a five out of five star read. When was that? Several years ago? Can't, can't remember the date. I love Anthony Horowitz. There's a new one coming and it's called, called Close to Death. And I, I, I love his book covers. Anyway, I'm, so I'm in the queue for that. Anything that you're reading, let me know, let us all know. But you know, I, I love the, the, the cozy mysteries. The, the, those are just my, my best way to get some self-care. Speaking of which, let's get into your four self-care missions. And remember, you can choose one, you can choose three of them. Hopefully you'll do all four of them. Let me know down below, as, as usual, as I've said, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. Please like, subscribe, comment, whatever. You, you, know, you, know the, uh, you know what to do. Okay, here's the first mission. We've changed seasons, if not, if not physically. We had snow the other morning here in Copenhagen. At least calendar-wise, it's officially spring here. Okay, try a new beverage or a mocktail, maybe it's a, a new tea, something, you know, change up the seasons, try something new. And 
one that I tried uh, a few months back was something called London Fog. Have you ever tried that? It was it's in a Danish cafe here and it was called London Fog and I thought, what on earth is that? I've never heard of it. I mean, I'm British. Uh, London Fog, for those not in the know, I think it's like Earl Grey tea served in a, a long glass where it's served with lots of hot milk and you leave the tea bag in. Who knew? And I quite liked it. And with, I think they put honey in it or something to sweeten it. Anyway, I, I tried it. Didn't have, don't need to have it again. But hey, so try something. Try some, changing up uh, one of the drinks that you're having. And I just have to say, at, at the weekend, the clocks went forward for us here in, uh, in, in Europe. And I know in the States, you've already done yours. And the tradition here in Denmark, the, the way that we remember spring forward, fall back, is we put out our garden furniture. And we weren't here the weekend because we were in Sweden for, for Easter. Just me and Happy, it was so nice. So I didn't have a chance to put out the garden furniture here in Copenhagen. And guess what? On, on Monday, it snowed. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't put out the garden furniture yet. Snow, it usually happens. So our garden furniture is going out this weekend. Anyway, on to mission number two. I digress as usual. I'm feeling chatty today. Are you, are you noticing that? Okay, number two is to go online and research some books. Maybe you can uh, order some from your library. I've got the Anthony Horowitz ordered. I think the book is coming out the 11th of April. Or maybe grab a magazine, go to your local book exchange. Something to do with reading. Re reading's always great. Down download uh, an audio book. Maybe you've got a free uh, subscription for something for an audio book. Okay, number three is to do some exercise that you don't have to commit to. And what I mean by that is, is like go for a bike ride or go for a walk or try the machines at your local, um, at your local gym, but don't have the feeling that you have to commit to it. Okay, because sometimes it's quite nice just to do something different or try something new and not say, Oh, I'm, I'm going to go out for a bike ride and I'm going to do it every, every morning uh, in the spring. Just, just do something, but feel, know that you don't have to commit to it, okay? Because sometimes that kind of takes off the pressure and lets us try something new. So an exercise, but don't commit to it. And number four, because we are changing seasons, hopefully, at least we've got sunshine here this morning. There wasn't sunshine earlier. I've been down for my skinny dip in the sea with Vibeck and Helena, and it was cold and dull. Anyway, the sun, sun's out now. Mission number four is to try some of the new trends that are coming with clothes. Change it up. Now, uh, a, a wee word here. On Wednesday, I did a live broadcast together with Carol Tuttle. I was a special guest in their style school, which they're running this month. If you're a member of Dressing Your Truth in Lifestyle, you've probably already seen the, the video. We did one hour together and we were giving tips about putting outfits together, decluttering in your closet, in your wardrobe, how to add some of, some, uh, some of the, the recent trends. And I've got the footage from Carol, so I'm hoping to put that here on my YouTube channel next week. So look out for that. I will give you access so you can see that the one hour video where we really, there, there was, there's so much in it, you'll, you'll get a lot of inspiration. And there are lots of different trends that you can, you can dive in. Preppy look, girl core, florals, coloured jewellery. That's not really my thing, but who knows? I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, wide leg trousers, crop trousers. Maybe there's something there you can try. So I'm, I'm wearing a little uh, piece of flowery thing today. Uh, girl core is very in. Anything very feminine. Lace, pink. Lots of pearls. So see if you can put together a new outfit with, with a kind of little nods to the trends. Not telling you to buy anything. <laughs> we don't need to be buying anything new. But just use what you have in your wardrobe. As Carol said, stay updated, not outdated. Right, so one, two, three or four. What are you going to do? I'm going to get uh, cleared up here. Hopefully you have been folding some laundry or you have been doing the dishes empty the dishwasher while we chatted today. I shall see you next week and all I've got left to say is live long and prosper. May the Danish 
who could be with you. Hopefully some sunshine coming your way. And if not, if you don't have sunshine, make your own sunshine. And I shall send you off in your merry way with a rah, rah, rah. Okay, bye for now.